What's going on? My name is Blake, and today I'm going to show you how to turn a plastic bottle into 3D printer filament. I also have some tips and tricks, as well as some good print settings for pet plastic filament. So let's get into it. First things first, you're going to need a pull extruding machine. This machine takes the plastic and reshapes it into a 1.75 millimeter diameter cylinder. It's interesting to know that these machines don't actually fully melt the plastic. The inside of the filament is actually hollow. This is the main reason pull extrusion is actually a lot different than extrusion. When you're extruding plastic, it's usually more in a liquid state, so the temperature could cooling and speed at which you pull out the plastic determines the diameter of the plastic. In pull extrusion, you're basically just bending the plastic into a new shape. So speed, temperature, and cooling don't matter as much. I was amazed when I saw this video online by Let's Make. He used a drill, some gears, and a hot glue gun to successfully pull extrude plastic. And I actually based my design of the pull extruder based on this design. So shout out to that guy. But anyway, back to step one. Which machine should you pick? If you want to get started immediately and you have a spare ender laying around and also a bunch of filament, the recreator might be the choice for you. This machine sources most of its parts from an ender and it's reliable. Downsides are the assembly and the time and cost that it takes to 3D print the whole thing out. Option two, probably the most reliable machine out there, is the Pet Machine by Tillman Design. I'm pretty sure this is the guy who discovered the process of pull extrusion. I'm not even sure if pull extrusion is the correct word for this, but he's at least the one who popularized it with YouTube videos. He has a parts kit online and he also sells a fully assembled kit. The upsides to this machine are the reliability and customer support. Downsides are the price and shipping time. Last on the list, we have the Pull Extruder M1, which is a machine I designed. So this definitely makes me biased in assessment, but I'll try to be as unbiased as possible. I based my design off of the Let's Make design where he used a hot glue gun. I basically took the heating element that they use in hot glue guns, which is a PTC heating element, and I used that instead of a PID controller. So the main upside to my design is that it's very cheap to create, and the downsides are the heating element is kind of exposed, so you have to be careful with it. Assembly requires some soldering because I can't afford a PCB yet, and the screw that attaches the heater block to the mounting bracket likes to bend a little bit, which is definitely annoying and could require a replacement, but I have ran about 10 full-size gallon water bottles jugs through the machine without an issue. So overall, I'd say the biggest downside is that the machine is early in development. And I'm waiting on market testing and feedback to determine whether it's a good idea to invest more money into optimizing it and adding more features. I'll leave a link to all of these machines in the description below. So now that you have a machine, you now need a bottle cutter. I'd recommend one that uses bearings. The most important thing when it comes to a bottle cutter is having sharp bearings. The sharper you can get them, the better. Next, you need pet plastic bottles. The larger the bottle, the better, because it'll give you a higher yield. Also note the thickness of the bottle. Bottles with thicker plastic need to be cut thinner. Otherwise, it'll make it difficult on the machine to pull extrude it correctly. A good starting point is eight millimeter thickness. Now that you have a bottle cutter and a bottle, you need to prepare the bottle so you can turn it into cordage. To do that, you'll need a heat gun. Start by removing the label. You can remove it easier with the heat gun. Just make sure you don't burn through the label. Next, you can inflate the bottle with the heat gun. Make sure the bottle is clean on the inside. Rotate the bottle in one hand. You don't want to burn a hole through the bottle because that'll make it impossible to inflate. So go steadily back and forth. Also, a pair of gloves might help because the bottle might get pretty hot. You can stop when everything's relatively smooth and even. After this, I like to hit the bottle with some goo gun. You can get this at Walmart for like five bucks. It'll remove any leftover adhesive. You don't want that going through your 3D printer. Now you can start turning the bottle into cordage. Make sure the bearings are sharp and the cutting height of the bottle cutter is set correctly. Usually about eight millimeter thickness works good. Cut the end of the bottle off. I used a razor blade and thread a small piece through the cutter. I'd recommend using a clamp so you can free up both of your hands. And with one hand, you want to angle the top of the bottle slightly inwards and then use a steady pulling action. The most difficult part is getting it started. For that, you could use a pliers to help get it started. This is how much of the bottle is left over after you're done. It's about 15 to 20% of the bottle on the top and bottom. So the yield is about 50 or 60% of the bottle minus the cap. This is what the cordage looks like when you're done. It might be useful to store it on an old filament spool. At this point, you can start adding color to the cordage. For this, you can use a Sharpie marker. You don't want to put too much ink on here. Less is more. And you also want to make sure you're coloring the inside of the cordage. Remember how I said the cordage is bent, not melted? You want the ink to be on the inside of the hollow part so the ink doesn't come into contact with the inside of your nozzle. Also, the colors that you choose will usually come out a different color once you 3D print with it. For example, this blue turtle is actually made with a green marker. I think this might have something to do with the crystallization of the pet. It adds like a white tint to it, which is kind of cool because it gives you some cool color effects. Once you have your cordage made and optionally colored, you can now feed it through your machine. In order to do this, you need to cut a long, thin strand, kind of like you're sharpening a stick. It can be useful to fold it over on itself. You can do this with your hand or a pliers. Once it's fed through, you can turn the machine on. You'll need a tool to help you pull it through. I use this little cutting tool with light pressure to get it started. And then I use a pliers to pull it more. The hotter the nozzle, is the easier this will be. Now this is an example from the machine I made. There are two holes in the side of the spool. You want to feed the filament through both of these holes and then you can use the spool and kind of pull it back. I used a compliant mechanism in the design so it just snaps into place. It just makes loading and unloading it a bit easier. So now you can pull extrude everything. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes for a full gallon jug. It gives you about 40 grams of filament which isn't bad. You can print a lot of things with that amount of filament. So now you can unload it using the compliant mechanism. It should work somewhat decently. You will get some backlash on the spool which is alright. 
right? Because of the smaller form factor of the spool, this filament will have some, will have smaller bends in it compared to machines with bigger spools. You can kind of get all the bends and the kinks out by running it through your hand with some pressure. Should straighten everything out. Now it's time to 3D print. Here's some settings that will get you started. 267 degrees Celsius. I'd recommend using an all metal hot end. PTFE lined hot ends start to degrade around 250 degrees Celsius. 80 degrees on the bed. Print slow using gyroid infill. Good retraction, 30% cooling after the first layer. Make sure there's a Z hop and then increase the extrusion multiplier because remember that filament is hollow. So you need to figure that out experimentally. Shout out to okweird5779 on Reddit for discovering those settings. So with that, you should be ready to start making your own filament. Here's something that I made with recycled filament. It's a really, really, really small skateboard and I made it using a bunch of gallon water jugs. As you can see, it looks more like a roller skate than a skateboard. But yeah, anyway, thank you for watching the video. Like, comment, and subscribe and share it if you want to see me hit a sick, nasty kickflip.